The method of judicious guessing is long, boring, and difficult, but I'm going to do a few problems and at the end of this video you should be able to tackle any judicious guessing problem that comes your way. So first thing I want to point out is we're dealing with non-homogeneous differential equations. That means the right hand side of this equal sign is not zero. Uh, before we get started, I also want to say when you do this pro type of problem, you want to put a line separating the polynomial part from the exponential and trig part. So you might have something like t squared or t cubed or t. We want to put a line there separating the polynomial from the trig and exponential part. This is just an exponential Part, but you might also have a sine or a cosine. So draw that line first. Then we want to solve the homogeneous differential equation. That is to say, I want to solve just y double prime minus 5y prime plus 6y equals 0. The way we do that is convert this to a characteristic polynomial. That would be r squared minus 5r plus 6, which factors into r minus 3 times r minus 2, which tells us the roots are r equals 3 and r equals 2. Once you have the values of r equals 3 and 2, that allows you to set up your homogeneous solution of c1e to the 3t plus c2e to the 2t. Okay, step two is a three-part question. Step two is a, b, c. A, what value of r corresponds to the right-hand side of your differential equation? So here's my differential equation. The right-hand side, I see an e to the 4t. Because that value is 4, this coefficient of t, the value of r is 4. In the same way that when I got r equals 3, I created an e to the 3t term in my homogeneous. When I got r equals 2, I also created an e to the 2t term. So it's not shouldn't be surprise you guys too much that if I see e to the 4t on the right hand side, that tells me that my answer to 2a is r equals 4. Does this match one of the values of r we found earlier? This is the answer to part b. Does r equals 4 match one of the values of r we found earlier? No, it doesn't. Now, when this answer is yes, I'll show you what you do, but for now, let's just say this answer is no because obviously it doesn't match. Part C is what degree polynomial or what polynomial of the same degree do we see on the left side of this line? So the number eight isn't much of a polynomial. We have polynomials like eight or four t squared or something like t cubed or t to the fourth or things like these. This is degree two, this is degree four, this is degree three. Eight by itself is degree zero. So a general degree zero polynomial will be A. This is as opposed to something like AT plus B if we saw a degree one polynomial, or AT squared plus BT plus C if we saw a degree two polynomial, or something like AT cubed plus BT squared plus CT plus D if we saw a degree three polynomial, and so on. All right, now that we've answered these, two, these three questions for step two, we're gonna move on to step three, which tells us create your particular solution. Your particular solution is your answer from 2c, so in this case just a, times everything that we see on the right hand side of this, this line. So we, see, we just see e to the 4t, we're going to tack on e to the 4t here. So this is my particular solution. Okay, simple enough. Step 4 is to compute the first and second derivatives of that yp. So since yp was e to the uh, 4t, that's a 4, trust me, a e to the 4t, we need the derivative of that guy, y prime and y double prime. This is going to give me 4a e to the 4t due to the chain rule and 16a e to the 4t. So you need the first and second derivatives. Those are all computed in step four. Step five, trust me, this is only a seven step process. We're close to the end. Step five is take these things that we see, y prime, y double prime, and y, plug these into the original differential equation. Now the original differential equation was y double prime minus five y, so we'll put a minus five times, and we'll put a plus six times, and we'll say equals eight e to the four t, because that's the original differential equation. But instead of saying y double prime and y prime and y, and y I'm gonna put the things that I found in step four here, here, and here. So y double prime is 16a e to the four t, and y prime is 4a e to the 4t and y just y was a e to the 4t okay let's collect a bunch of terms together in fact i can probably distribute and collect terms i have 16a e to the 4t minus 20a e to the 4t plus 6a e to the 4t the right hand side stays, stays, stays the same as e to the 4t and now what happens to the left hand side i've got a 16a minus 20a it's negative 4a plus 6a is 2a e to the 4t equals 8e to the 4t. Oh, this is actually pretty simple. I have e to the 4t on both sides. Those can cancel. I can divide both sides by 2, and that gives me a equals 4. Now that I have the value a equals 4, this is step 6. I've basically solved this equation for the values of a. Now, 
This is a relatively e easy one because I have an A. But as I, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes you get AT plus B, or CT or AT squared plus CT, B, BT plus C. So we might end up with more variables than just the one we see here. I started with a simple case, but we're gonna do some more complicated cases in just a minute. So solving this system, well, it wasn't much of a system, just solving this one equation gives me A equals four. Uh, that means my final answer, this is step seven, my final, final answer is y sub h plus y sub p. Now, y sub h we found way back in step one. That was this guy. So y equals c1 e to the 3t plus c2 e to the 2t. But now we have to add, let's go ahead and label this as yh. Now we have to add our particular solution. Our particular solution was a e to the 4t, but we found the value of a in step six. So step six told us the value of a was four. So we have plus four e to the 4t and this is our particular solution, but this is our final answer to this differential equation. Let's go ahead and do another. All right, now I wanna show you a problem where the left-hand side characteristic polynomial has a root that matches the value of r from the right-hand side. Before we get started, make sure we draw that vertical line between the polynomial and exponential part, and now we'll proceed with step one. Step one says get your characteristic equation, that'd be r squared minus four equals zero, which factors into r minus two times r plus two equals zero, which means our two values of r are r equals two and r equals negative two. Okay, that, then our homogeneous solution, by the way, is then c1 e to the two t plus c2 e to the negative two. Now that we've done step one, we want to proceed with step two. Step two, remember, is a three-part question, A, B, and C. What value of R corresponds to the right-hand side of the differential equation? Well, this is e to the 2t, so R is 2. B, does this match one of the values of R we found from before? Yes, it does. It matches this R equals 2. We're going to say, yes, it matches it matches once. The reason I say once here is because there are situations where this value of two will match this two and this, this two, although this is a negative two, so it only matches once. We'll talk about how to handle what happens when this has once versus twice and so on. Uh, C, part C is what degree polynomial do we see attached to the left-hand side of the differential equation, or the left-hand side of this bar, I should say, and what is the form of that polynomial? So this is a first degree polynomial, it's four t to the power of one. So your general one degree polynomial is at plus b. Okay, step three says set up your particular solution. Y sub P equals your answer from 2C, which is AT plus P, times the trig or exponential part that we see on the right-hand side of that vertical bar. In this case, the vertical bar has E to the 2T to the right of it, so that's gonna go here. There's one small change I need to make, and this is all stemming from the fact that the answer to this question was yes once. Because there was a match, we need to pop an extra factor of T right there. Because this is yes once, we'll say this is t to the one. But if the answer is said yes twice, and wishes to say the r equals two matched here and here, we would put a t squared. Before I go ahead and take the derivative of this in step four, I'm gonna multiply that t to the inside of this, giving me yp equals at squared plus bt times e to the two t. Okay, now we can proceed with step four, which is to take the first and second derivative of this guy. I'm gonna use the first derivative right here. This is gonna be an annoying first derivative because it requires product rule and chain rule, so bear with me here. The derivative of at squared plus bt is two at plus b, leaving the e to the two t alone. Then we leave the at squared plus bt alone. And we take the derivative of e to the two t. Now the derivative of e to the two t is e to the two t, but a two will pop out. Okay, this is gonna get really messy really quick, so what I'm gonna do is be really clever here. I'm gonna factor an e to the 2t out of both this set of terms and this set of terms, and it's gonna make my job a little bit easier. So this is still yp. Factoring out e to the 2t gives me e to the 2t times 2at plus b. I would have at squared plus bt, but don't forget this is multiplied by two, so make sure that two gets distributed in here. The hardest part of any of these uh, judicious guessing problems is making sure you're able to do this uh, product rule safely and soundly. So two at squared, and we have a two bt. Okay, now I'm gonna go take that next derivative up here. Y double prime of p equals, I'm gonna take the derivative of this, uh, this giant parentheses term. This is gonna give me two a, that b goes away. The derivative of 2at squared is plus 4at. The derivative of 2bt is just 2b. And we leave the e to the 2t alone. Then we say, what's the derivative of e to the 2t, leaving this giant chunk of terms alone? That's gonna be 2e to the 2t. The two pops down as a result of chain rule, leaving all this alone though. So 2at plus b plus four, or plus 2at squared, um, and then plus 2bt. Okay. That's our second derivative. Now I know this is gonna make you sad, so 
we have to take this second derivative and this first derivative and this yp and plug it back into the original differential equation. Now I've got some good news. We don't really need y prime because it doesn't show up in this differential equation. So this guy can kind of we can kind of ignore. But I need to take this entire chunk of terms and then subtract this entire chunk of terms times four. So here we go. My differential equation was y double prime minus four y equals four t minus three e to the two t. I'm going to replace y double prime with this. So here we go. Two a plus 4a t plus 2b e to the 2t plus 2e to the 2t times 2a t plus, don't you hate this? This isn't this the worst? Plus b, that's a b, trust me, plus 2a, that's a, 2a t squared plus 2b t, okay, minus 4y. So there's that minus 4y. So minus 4 times this guy. So minus 4 times a t squared plus b t e to the 2 t and all of this needs to equal 4 t minus 3 e to the 2 t. Okay, that's step 5. Step 5 is plugging all of that junk that from we got from step 4, y prime, y double prime, and y into the differential equation, making sure we set it equal to the right side of the differential equation. Now, we have to play this game of collecting terms. This is step 6. Step 6 says, what t terms do we have? What t squared terms do we have? What uh, constant terms do we have? Let's start with the highest power on t that we see. I see a t squared term here. So our t squared terms are, I don't see a t squared in here. I see a 2at squared here and a 2 times 2at squared at that. So this is going to be a 4at squared. Any other t squared terms? Yeah, there's one here. There's a negative 4at squared here, so minus 4a. And it's all going to give me 0. That actually always happens when there's a match. This, this highest degree term will always give a 0 when there is a match. And to say nothing of the fact that I don't see a t squared term on the right-hand side anyway. So this should give me 0 on the, on the left-hand side. Let's go to our t terms. What t terms do we have? We've got a 4at. We have a 2at times a 2, so that's going to be a plus 4a. And we have a 2bt times 2, so this is going to be a plus 4b term. And then I have a minus 4 times bt, so a minus 4b term there. The b's cancel, giving me 4a plus 4a is 8a. And this needs to equal the coefficient of t on this side, because again, this is my t term, 4t. So I get 4, or just 4, because it's my t term, so I just say 4. So the coefficient of the t term. So 8a equals 4, which is another way of saying a equals 1 half. And now we're going to go to our c-o-n-s-t term, our constant term. What constant terms do we have in this whole differential equation? We have a 2a. We have a 2b. We have a, another 2b, 2b. We have no other constant terms from this and no constant terms from this. And this all needs to equal the constant term from the right-hand side. So that's the negative 3 that we have here. So negative 3 goes here. We know that a was 1 half. So we can replace a by 1 half here. 1 half times 2 is 1. Plus 2b plus 2b is 4b equals negative 3. I'm going to subtract this 1 from the left to the right to give me 4b equals negative 4. So b equals negative 1. Now we're done with step 6. We're almost done. Step 7, final step. Take your general solution, which is going to be your homogeneous plus your uh, particular. Your homogeneous was C1e to the 2t plus C2e to the negative 2t. Then we have our particular solution. Our particular solution was this guy. Uh, or let's actually better that, better that let's, let's do this guy. But we found the values of a and b. We found a to be 1 half, so we're going to say 1 half t squared. And we found b to be negative 1. So we'll say not plus, but rather minus 1 e to the 2t, and that is our answer. That is the solution to this differential equation. For this judicious discussing problem, I want to show you how to handle a situation where the right-hand side has a sine or a cosine. We're still going to draw our vertical line between the polynomial and the trigger exponential part, as we always do, and then proceed with step one, which is to get our hands on the characteristic polynomial, so that'd be r squared minus 4r plus 3 equals 0, which factors into r minus 3, r minus 1 equals 0. That means r equals 3, or r equals 1. Then we go to step two, actually before step two, let's go and get our homogeneous, yh equals c1 e to the 3t plus c2 e to the 1t. All right, now we'll go on to step two. Step two is that question a, b, and c. What value of r corresponds to the right-hand side of the differential equation? This sine term indicates the presence of a uh, complex conjugate. So we don't have an e term, like if we had an e term, we'd have that real number that, as its coefficient, but we don't. So zero plus or minus 2i. Uh, if we had something like e to the 3t times cosine 
of 4t. That would be something like uh, 3 plus or minus 4i. The 3 gives the real part here. The 4 of the coefficient of t produces the 4i. But because we don't have an e here, we have 0 plus or minus 2i. So 0 plus or minus 2i is the r that corresponds to the right-hand side. Does this match one of our values from before? No, it doesn't. So that's nice. The answer is no here. Uh, but part C, what degree polynomial do we see on the, on the left-hand side of this line? This is 5, the number 5, which is a constant. So that's a degree 0 polynomial, which can be represented by A. Okay, step 3 is setting up our particular solution. That is taking your answer from 2C, which in this case is A, and multiplying it by the trig or exponential part on the right-hand side of this line. In this case, the right-hand side of the line says sine of 2T. Now here's the kicker. Any time one of the trig functions, either sine or cosine, is present in the right-hand side of your differential equation, you must also provide the other in the particular. So sine is present, we must also put a cosine. Uh, so we're, one thing to point out is, if there's a sine, we need cosine. If there's a cosine, we need sine. So we need both. The other thing to point out is, the degree of the polynomial you attach to the cosine, or sine in the case that cosine's here, is the same as the one we attached to the original one. So in this case, we had a, a zeroth degree polynomial, such as the constant a, and because of, because of that, we want to put a constant polynomial attached to the cosine, so it's just b cosine. But just in case it had been, say, something like at plus b here, you would have needed to put a ct plus d here. They need to be the same degree polynomial, but this is a nice one, it's just a, simply a constant polynomial. We're gonna go ahead and proceed with step four, which means I need to get my hands on y prime of p and the y double prime of p. The first derivative of this guy is 2a cosine of 2t minus 2b sine of 2t. The next derivative will be negative 4a sine 2t, and the derivative of this will be minus 4b cosine 2t. Now that I've got my first and second derivatives and the original uh, particular solution, I'm going to take these things and plug them back into the original differential equation. So we're looking at y double prime minus 4y prime plus 3y. We're going to say this is equal to, y double prime gets replaced by this, negative 4a sine 2t minus 4b cosine 2t. Then I have negative 4 times y prime. Well, y prime is this, so we'll say minus 4 times 2a cosine 2t minus 2b sine 2t. And lastly, we have plus three times y. So we have plus three times this guy, a sine 2t plus b cosine 2t. And all of this needs to equal the right-hand side of our original differential equation, five sine 2t. Okay, once again, it's a giant jumble of sines and cosines and a's and b's. What we're gonna start with is group on powers of t, well, wait a second, there are no powers of t, there are sine terms and cosine terms. So instead of grouping on powers of t, we're gonna group in power, or not powers, but rather sines and cosines. So what sine terms do we have? We have a negative 4a sine term here. We have a negative four times negative 2b would be plus 8b sine. And we have a plus 3a sine here. Uh, this ends up giving us negative a plus 8b equals five. What sine terms do we see on the right-hand side? We see five sine. Now let's do the same thing for cosine. What cosine terms do we have? We have a negative 4b cosine. We have a negative four times positive 2a would be negative 8a. And then we have a plus 3b cosine here, 3b cosine. So plus 3b cosine needs to equal what cosine terms do we have on the right-hand side? Well, notice there are no cosine terms on the right-hand side. So all of this, once I simplify this a little bit, I'm gonna get negative uh, 8a minus b, this is supposed to equal zero because I see no cosine terms on the right-hand side. And now we have a system to solve. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply the second equation by eight, it's just basically a system of equations we're gonna solve by elimination. Multiply the bottom equation by eight, keeping the first equation on top alone. And then if I add these two equations, the 8b and the negative 8b cancel, I have negative a minus 64a would be negative 65a, and then five plus zero is five. If we solve for a here, we get a equals negative one over 13, and now I need to take this back and plug it into one of the original equations to find my value for b. I'm gonna plug it into, let's plug it into this equation. I'm gonna get negative eight a, but a, since a is negative 1 13th, minus b equals zero, I end up here getting b equals eight thirteenths. So now I have a is negative 1 13th and b is positive eight thirteenths. That is step six. I didn't even tell you what step was I was on. So plugging all of that stuff in was step five, and then solving the system of equations is step six. Now we're on to step seven. Step seven is getting our final, final answer. 
Step seven is our, our, our homogeneous solution from before, so C1 e to the 3t plus C2 e to the t, plus our particular solution. Now you could say plus a sine 2t plus b cosine 2t, but it's not correct because we found the values of a and b. So a was equal to negative 1 1 13th sine 2t, and then we have plus 8 thirteenths cosine 2t. And this is our final answer to this differential equation. For this last part, all I want to do is get to step three, which is to set up the particular solution. I don't want to go about taking the derivatives or subbing it into the differential equation, but I want to make sure we understand steps one, two, and three that allow us to get to y sub p. So let's start with this guy over here. Actually, before we get started on any of these, I want to draw a little vertical line between my polynomial and my trig part. We'll come back to this in a second. There's my polynomial and my trig and expo exponential part there. I don't have any exponential or trig part here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this is times e to the zero t and draw a little vertical bar there. Okay. Going back over to this guy, we have y double prime plus 4y equals t squared e to the negative t. Let's go ahead and proceed with step one. Step one is get that auxiliary equation, r squared plus 4 equals 0. Uh, this doesn't factor, but if you use a quadratic formula or just subtract the 4 and take the square root, we get r equals 0 plus or minus 2i. Step two, we have parts a, b, and c. Remember, step 2a asks what value of r corresponds to the right-hand side of that line. That would be r equals negative 1 because that's the coefficient of t. Does negative one match the value of r we found in step one? No. Uh, and step C is what degree polynomial do we see here? And what's the general form of the degree two polynomial in this case that, that we would write? Well, degree two polynomial is written as at squared plus bt plus c. So our answer to three, which is our particular solution, is your answer from two C, so at squared plus bt plus c, times everything that we see on the right hand side of the, the line, which is e to the negative t. And because there's not a match, we do not need to tack on an extra factor of t. Okay, let's do the same process for this guy. I'm going to get my auxiliary equation, my characteristic polynomial, r squared plus 3r equals 0, which gives me roots of r equals 0 and negative 3. Step 2, a, b, c. What value of r corresponds to the right-hand side? e to the 0t, that value corresponds to r equals 0. Does this match one of the values of r we found earlier? Yes, it does, and it matches only once, so we're only going to tack on one additional factor of t when we get to our particular solution. What degree polynomial do we see here? This is a second degree polynomial, so once again we'll say at squared plus bt plus c, and so when we set up our particular solution we'll say yp equals, answer from 2c, at squared plus bt plus c, times everything on the right-hand side of the differential equation. Well, the right-hand side is e to the 0t, so you can say e to the 0t if you want to, but we all realize that's just going to become 1 anyway. And don't forget, because it matched once, we're going to have to tack on an additional factor of t. So this is your particular solution. Of course, you can distribute the t to the inside to give you at cubed plus bt squared plus ct. Finally, we have this one over here. Let's do this in blue. Uh, we need to get our hands on the characteristic polynomial. r squared minus 2r plus 5 equals 0. Doesn't factor, so you have to use the quadratic formula or complete the square, but when you do, you find r equals 1 plus or minus 2i. Uh, now we're going to go answer, that's step 1. Step 2 says, what are the answers to a, b, and c? Um, what value of r corresponds to the right-hand side? Well, the right-hand side has a, a 1 as the coefficient of the t, so that's 1 plus or minus our coefficient of t inside the cosine is 2. So we have 1 plus or minus 2i. This is a match. Yes, this is indeed a match. Now, you might think it matches twice because there's 1 plus 2i and 1 minus 2i. But really, when, it, when you have a complex conjugate match, we still only count that as once. And then what degree polynomial do we see here? We see just the, the number 8. And that's a 0 degree polynomial. So your general de degree 0 polynomial is just a. Let's go set up our particular solution. Our particular solution is your answer from 2c, which is just a, times the trig or exponential part that we see on the right side of the line. So that's e to the t cosine of 2t. And then don't forget, because it was yes once, there was a match, we tack on an additional factor of t. Here's another thing you might have forgotten. Remember, when cosine is present on the right-hand side, or when sine is present on the right-hand side, you also have to throw in the other guy. So we need plus b e to the t times sine of 2t, and this term as well gets a factor of t because it's still a match. The match applies both to the cosine and to the sine, so this is our particular solution to this guy. And here are three problems that are at least show you the setup of how to get to your particular solution.